Hey guys and gals, welcome back to another video. Today, we are going to be talking iMac. To be more specific, a 2011 27 inch iMac that I purchased recently at auction. If you haven't seen that video, I'm going to put a link up in the corner. You can check that out. Uh, it was part of the 34 iMac lot and I picked this one out to keep and use for a couple of projects that I'm going to be doing in the future. But today we are going to go through that iMac and we're going to add a second hard drive, an SSD, and replace it, replace the DVD drive with an SSD so we'll have not one but two internal hard drives. So hold on to your seats and let's get rocking. Before we get started, please take a second, hit that subscribe button, and like this video. It really means a lot to me and helps the channel grow. Let's first go over the full specs of this iMac. It's a 2000, 2011, like I said at the beginning, 27 inch iMac with a 3.4 gigahertz Intel Core i7 processor. Uh, it has 16 gigabytes of 1333 megahertz DDR3 RAM and it had the highest graphic card you could get in an iMac in 2011 as the AMD Radeon HD 6970M which gave us 2 gigabytes uh, DDR5 for storage it currently has the standard 1 terabyte hard disk drive that all of the Macs from this era came from, came with. We're going to add an additional 120 gigabyte SSD so that we can boot Mac OS from that. It'll make it so much faster to turn on and to do simple tasks with. And to make up the 16 gigabytes of RAM, it's using 4 gigabyte uh, dims in all four available slots. This particular iMac allows for up to 32 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. I am not going to install that at this time. I think it's a little unnecessary for what I'm going to be using it for. And lastly, before we get into the upgrade, um, just go over the display, which is a 27 inch 2560 by 1440 display which is still a beautiful, crisp, clear, and clean display. Uh, I currently use the 27-inch Thunderbolt display on my Mac, so I love this display. So I purchased a 120GB SSD on Amazon. I'll link that below. And then I also purchased this little tray that replaces the DVD drive slot inside the Mac. I also got that on Amazon. Uh, links for both of these will be in the description below. The hard drive was like $20 and the CD tray was only like $8. So to start the repair, we turn off the computer obviously and then make sure that we unplug the computer from the power source. It's always a good thing to do to prevent any kind of damage uh, that is brought from any kind of source or draw of electricity. Then to get the plastic off the LCD, all we need to do is grab two suction cups, place them in the top uh, right and left corners of the glass, and then just pull on it, and it should pop right off. Sometimes you got to give it a little oomph. Don't give it too much oomph to where you crack the glass. Sometimes I like to get it started by wedging my finger down in there a little bit, get it separated then as you see it just slides right off you pull it down and then slide it up from the bottom and that exposes the LCD which is behind that glass panel uh, one thing to note do not touch the LCD with your fingers it's super hard to get rid of those fingerprints now we need to grab our screwdriver set and remove the screws 
that are holding the LCD panel in place. Now we can begin unscrewing. Uh, I didn't really get very good footage of this because I ended up standing in the camera. Um, a couple of things to note though, there are magnets that make the screws kind of hard to get out. So just make note of that as you begin unscrewing them. Now that all the screws have been removed, we can just take a little pry tool and pull the LCD off of the front of the iMac. Uh, be very careful because the iMac is held on by several cables behind the LCD. So you pull it forward just a few inches, enough to be able to reach down there and remove uh, the three three or four cables that are visible and uh, it's, it's easy you just find where they're plugged in and and unplug them uh, again I didn't get very good footage of that because I only have one camera at the moment Now that we have all of the cables removed from the LCD, we can go ahead and just lift it up gently and set it in a safe place while we work on the inside of the iMac. As you can see, this is what they look like if you've never seen one before without the screen on it. Now in order to remove the CD drive, the DVD drive, you just need to unscrew these four screws that are highlighted here in red. Um, and then find the little cable and pull it down as the it's connected right down here by the fan and Then you'll be able to pull The hard drive or the DVD drive right out of the slot there And as you can see it pops right out of place. There is a little glued thing, um, but it pops right out pretty easy. Now that we have it outside of the iMac, we can begin to take the black bracket that holds the DVD drive in place once it's installed on the iMac. Uh, there's four screws and you just unscrew each one of those screws now that we have the screws all removed we can we need to take off this chrome film uh, silver duct tape whatever you guys want to call it uh, that's holding the DVD drive to the black bracket so I just took uh, some tweezers to kind of get under there and then I peeled it up gently because I'm going to use this to also hold the SSD tray in place as well. Now that the tape has been lifted up, we can just gently pull back on the DVD drive and it'll slide right out and we're left with the frame. Then we can grab the 120 gigabyte SSD that has been installed. The part that replaces where the hard or the DVD drive went. Uh, this is when I encountered a critical error because this particular uh, replacement part adapter, if you will, is designed for MacBooks. So it has two little slots that stick out that prevents it from fitting flush. 
So that took me a few minutes to figure out and I finally decided on using the trusty heavy duty scissors. Just cut right through it. May not be the most official way to do this, but boy did it work good. So I just went along there and trimmed off those little screw holes. I just kept trimming away on them until it finally fit. Then I was able to get it to fit flush, but then I realized that the screw holes don't align properly. That's what you get when you use something that's advertised as a MacBook part. So since I couldn't get the screws in, I went and grabbed two pieces of heavy duty packing tape and taped those to the ends of the drive adapter. Now I would never do this if I was gonna sell this to a customer. I am gonna be keeping this iMac, so I'm not worried about it. And the final product ended up to be very sturdy and works perfect. Now that we were able to get it in place, we need to grab the temperature sensor off of the DVD drive and put it onto the SSD because if we do not it could make the fans run non-stop on your iMac and I do not want that to happen so you just gently peel this off and stick it onto your SSD the new drive that we're going to install back into the iMac And now that we have the sensor back in place, we can push down uh, the adhesive that we pulled off of the iMac and it will be ready to reinstall back into the iMac. Now, like before, I wasn't able to get very good footage of me reinstalling the CD drive back in to the computer, but you just need to make sure that you line it up with where the slot would be and uh, then you tighten those four screws back down and plug the sensor back in. Now that we have the SSD properly installed, we can begin to plug the LCD back in and get it screwed back on so we can power it on and see if it works properly. Now before fully reassembling the computer, I am gonna power it on and see if it recognizes the SSD before I go through all the work to screw all of the screws back in and put the glass back on. And there we go. We pop right up and it does give us the two hard drive options, our option for the original hard drive and for our 120 gigabyte SSD. Just what we wanted. Now we can finish installing the LCD correctly, putting all the screws back in and putting the glass back on, and then we'll be able to install macOS High Sierra onto the SSD drive. Now that we have the glass panel back on the iMac, we can take a microfiber rag and some Windex and go ahead and clean off all of the nasty smudges and grime and nastiness that it's had for the last nine years off the front so that we're able to see clearly. Now we just simply boot the Mac into recovery and then we're going to install Mac OS High Sierra onto the SSD 
Um, I'm going to format the one terabyte hard drive so that that doesn't confuse the computer having two operating systems. And then do the installation. And then just like that, we have Hi Sierra installed and booted from the SSD onto this 2011 iMac. And just to double check, we can go into the storage section of the About This Mac, and we can see how they're both showing up as internal hard drives, a 120 gigabyte SSD and a one terabyte hard disk drive.